There are so many little tricks and techniques that you can use in your amigurumi projects to really enhance the overall look and appearance of your work. It's not very often that I see people talking about all the different ways you can enhance your amigurumi projects here on YouTube. So I figured this week we could just take some time to review some of the most helpful things that you can do in your amigurumi projects to really just make them look so much more crisp and clean and professional. If you're new here, hi, I'm Annie. I'm a crochet pattern designer. I specifically love designing amigurumi as you can probably see behind me and here on my channel I create all sorts of different content from vlogs to tutorials to tip videos like these so if that's something that interests you definitely consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss any future content from me here and with that being said let's go ahead and dive into the five tips I have to share with you today so number one, you really need to master the magic ring. I'm a firm believer in this and here on my channel, you'll probably notice I tend to work with chenille yarn. And if there's one thing you should know about chenille yarn, it's that it can be pretty tricky to use when you are creating a magic ring, especially when you're just starting out. A lot of times here on YouTube, I'll get questions in the comments of my videos specifically about the magic ring. Because if you've ever worked with chenille yarn, I can pretty confidently say that you have probably experienced the dreaded yarn snap. Oh my gosh. There are a few things worse than that when you are just working on a project trying to get the magic ring shut and it just snaps. Oh my goodness. I can say for a fact that I don't want that and you don't want that. So I'm going to walk you through how I do my magic rings really quick. So I'm going to use this orange color for the demonstration because I think you'll be able to see it really well. But here's what we're going to do. I simply start by holding the end of my yarn like this. I wrap it around my two fingers around the back, create an X just like this. And now I'm going to grab my hook and simply insert it underneath the bottom piece here, pull it over the top and underneath just like that. And as you can see here, we have this little ring, but to secure it, we're going to chain one. And that is our magic ring, okay? So this is usually the part where most people aren't confused, but this is usually what happens. I'm gonna show you really quick. So what most people will do is they will start by single crocheting six. That's usually the most common starting point for amigurumi. So they will do one, two, three, four, five, six. And then they'll pull it and they'll say, oh, I can't get this shut until so they'll yank on it and it'll snap like that. This is a horrific, horrific thing if you've worked with this. It is the worst feeling ever. We're not gonna do that, okay? I'm gonna show you what we are gonna do. So instead, we start the exact same way. We create that X, we make a loop and chain one, just like this. But this is what I found works the best for me. Usually what I do is I like to make the circle really small, just like this. And honestly, it's still just as easy to work into. But personally, I like the magic ring to be really tight because it gives it a really neat look. So now I'm going to work one single crochet, two, and three. And usually right at the three single crochet mark, I will start to pull the magic ring shut just like this. I found that if I do any more than three single crochet, it starts to become really hard to pull the magic ring shut, specifically with chenille yarn. It might look like you're not able to work into this little piece left of our circle, but it actually is more than enough. So I will continue working my remaining three single crochet here. One, two, and three. And this is what I'm left with. You can see there's still a slight hole here. And at this point, it's pretty safe to just give that a tug and it'll close it right up just like this. So that's our magic ring. In my opinion, and in the opinion of a lot of other pattern designers, this is the best way to start your project. Another method you might see pretty often is people chaining and then working into the first chain instead of creating the magic loop. But in my experience, it tends to create a much more bulky start to your project. And for the sake of being cohesive and professional, I personally prefer the magic ring and I pretty much have no problems working it exactly like this. I recommend starting with three single crochet, giving it a tug and then continuing on. But all of this leads us into tip number two, which actually is a personal preference and might be a little bit controversial, and that is to yarn under. I know most of us are pretty mixed on the yarn over or yarn under, but personally, I think, especially if you're a beginner, yarn under is the way to go because when you yarn under, it creates a much more cohesive stitch definition, but it also helps to tighten up your tension, which tends to be an issue for a lot of us beginners. And obviously with Amigurumi, you don't want your tension to be too too loose because then you're going to start to see the stuffing peeking through your project and nobody wants that. So let's cover the yarn under method super quick. 
So we're simply going to start by inserting our hook into the first stitch and when you're working a single crochet normally you would yarn over and you'll notice here that the yarn is over the hook. That's the easiest way to remember it. So this is a yarn over single crochet which is the normal standard way to single crochet but when you yarn under you're essentially putting the yarn under the hook like this and so you'll know you're yarning under when your hook is technically above the yarn and see how we're pulling it through just like this. And and you'll notice when you're yarning under you're kind of just grabbing the yarn like this and pulling it through whereas when you're yarning over you're sort of just letting the yarn grab onto the hook so it's a little bit different and in the beginning it can take some getting used to but personally I just love the appearance of it I think it looks so much more neat so again this is what the yarn under is going to look like the hook comes over the top of the yarn we pull through that stitch and we have our two loops and here this is where some people differ personally I do yarn over at this point and pull through two. I know that some people do yarn under for the second portion of the stitch but personally I just have found that it's not necessary so that is exactly how I do it. Again I put the hook over top of the yarn, the yarn under the hook and I pull through. For the second part of the stitch I put the yarn over the hook and pull through. And that's all there really is to it. If you want to see it a little bit more closely you can definitely slow down the video to get a better idea. So I really quickly just worked up these two super tiny swatches to show you a difference of what the two look like. So this right here is your standard single crochet and then this is a yarn under single crochet. I did the same amount of stitches on both of these swatches but you'll notice that the standard single crochet is slightly larger than the yarn under single crochet. And with the larger size, you will notice that there are more holes in the work. And to the untrained eye, it might not look like a huge difference between the two, but personally, I find that this one looks much more uniform than this one. If you look closely, you'll notice that the stitches look slightly different on the standard single crochet than with the yarn under. The yarn under creates sort of like a little puff appearance to the stitch, but you'll notice there's only one of them in each stitch. Whereas with the single crochet here, the standard version you will see it's not quite as uniform or the same and so personally I am a yarn under fan this is the one that I choose to work with because I personally prefer it however if you do have a tighter tension you might find that this works just fine for you Okay, number three, it is so, so important to take your time when you're stuffing your projects. I see a lot of people go wrong at this step, and personally, this was something I didn't realize for the longest time, but when you do have an amigurumi project, over time, the stuffing will kind of settle and it will flatten out a bit. So when a crochet pattern says to stuff it firmly, it really does mean it. Like, stuff that thing firmly because that is going to help it hold its shape, and honestly, I tend to err on the side of not stuffing enough. Enough, but I promise you that stuffing it on the side of more firm than less firm is definitely the way to go. But personally, I have found through trial and error that taking smaller pieces of stuffing and placing them where they should go inside of your project will give it a much more professional appearance. For example, if you're trying to stuff a round head, you would take a smaller piece of stuffing and put it into the head and make sure that you are rounding out your project as you go. Otherwise, you can end up with these lumps or divots in your project that make it look a little strange and if that's happened to you it's totally fine this is more a personal preference but I've had the same thing happen to me and it's really about having fun at the end of the day but personally I love the way my plushies look when I do stuff them very firmly and I stuff them with intention if that makes sense I think a really good example of this is this corgi that I made I showed this to you recently but as I was stuffing this project I noticed in the photos that the designer put a little extra stuffing in the side to kind of give the booty a more like round rounded out appearance, I guess, which makes sense because who doesn't love a corgi butt? But what I'm saying by this is I mean, when you notice things like this or certain areas in the pattern that are supposed to pop, you can always place a little extra stuffing there to give something the appearance of being more rounded out. Another example of this is my pigeon pattern. The pigeon has a bit of a belly on it. And so by placing some extra stuffing in the belly, you give it a really cute rounded out appearance. So number four is to know your safety eyes. If you buy your safety eyes, 
eyes on Amazon, you'll notice that they tend to only have the plain black safety eyes. And personally, I really love those. And there's a lot of really fun ways that you can kind of spice them up or make them look more unique. But recently, I just discovered the glittery safety eyes, which I think can add so much character to a project. And I really do think that the glittery eyes do have a place and they are worth having in your stash for certain projects. So if you haven't tried them before, I definitely recommend it. There are all sorts of small businesses in our community that sell glittery safety eyes. So I will have a bunch of small businesses that sell them linked in the description because they are definitely worth checking out sometime. But I have two pigeons here that I thought made a really good example of this because it shows how different your project can look depending on the safety eyes that you use. Okay, so we're gonna ignore the fact that this one doesn't have its feet attached yet, but as you can see, he has these really beautiful glittery green safety eyes, and I love the way these look. I love how they're sort of pointed inwards. I feel like that is perfect for a bird pattern. And this one here has the classic safety eyes that you see a lot of the time on Amazon, and I do love the appearance of them as well, but you'll notice I added a little bit of white here just to give it a little bit of extra pizzazz. I'm gonna show you how to do that later in this video but as you can see here this is the exact same pattern and it really does just give the entire project a different look depending on the size that you use and it really is all personal preference it's really whatever you enjoy working with but I really do think that the glittery safety eyes can be so fun to work with and make a great addition to so many different projects this is another example here. This is my newest crochet pattern, Monty the Moth, and it has this really pretty pink safety eye in it. And I really just think that this completely makes the project and just adds so much personality. So the topic of safety eyes actually leads us pretty perfectly into tip number five, which I think is one of my favorite tips because it can completely elevate your project. And that is adding facial details. I feel like I have been sleeping on this step for over a year now and when you start to implement these tips it really can make all the difference in a project so I'm gonna walk you through some of my favorite facial details to add so I'm gonna start by showing you a really simple eye detail that you can add if you are just using some basic black safety eyes like this. This is a really simple one to try if you're a beginner as well, but for this, I'm actually using some cotton yarn because I find that it does just work the best. It's a little bit less of a headache to work with. So I'm just gonna cut a piece of cotton yarn, roughly 18 inches or so, and I'm just going to give that a cut and I'm going to grab my tapestry needle we're just going to insert our needle like this and I'm gonna grab my plushie. And so usually what I'll do is I will insert the needle right about here. It doesn't have to be anywhere near the eye because we're gonna hide this tail at the end. But what I'll do is I'm gonna insert the needle like this and I'm gonna push it out about center with the top of the eye just like this. I'm gonna pull that yarn through and I'm gonna leave roughly eight inches of tail left over. At this point, I'm gonna insert my needle back through the bottom of the eye directly below where we inserted our needle the first time. And now that I have that inserted, what I'll do is I usually will push my needle out to the side like this just while I'm pulling through. And now I'm just going to pull through. And as I'm doing so, I'm gonna kind of nudge this over to the side and give it a little tug like that and here you can really see the difference this is the regular plain eye and here it is with just that little white detail i find that it really does just help to bring your plushie to life just a little bit more and it just adds a little extra something which really goes a long way to making your plushie just look a little more cute so now at this point i'm actually going to do the exact same thing on the other side i'm just inserting my needle here and putting it directly above the safety eye, just like we did previously, like this. And again, now I'm going to pull my yarn out directly through the bottom. And while I'm pulling through, I'm just gonna pull out the needle like this. And again, we are just going to nudge that to the side as we tug through. And look at that, isn't that just the cutest little thing? I just feel like that's such a fun little detail to add to your plushies. So at this point, what I like to do is put my needle back through that stitch and pull it out through the same stitch where we originally inserted the yarn through. I like to tie a little knot here just to secure everything. And then I'll go ahead and cut this. And this might be controversial, but I do use my scissors to kind of push the end back in. You can also use your crochet hook or a tapestry needle, but I just find that this works the best. 
I know a lot of people hate this, so I'm sorry if you can't stand watching that. And there we go. There's our new eyes with that added detail. I just love this. I think it really makes it so, so cute. So now I wanna show you how you can kind of shape the face a little bit to make it a little more realistic. I'm just going to start by using the same color as the head here and we are going to be using our tapestry needle. So it really depends on what type of animal or creature you're creating and what pattern you're using. But for this project, I think that having a little bit of a push in here in the eyes will add some character. So what we're gonna do now is insert our tapestry needle just like this, right around the eyes. And again, you can really do this wherever you want a little pinch in your project to add some character. So I'm just going to go right through these stitches here, just below the eyes. And again, I'm gonna be leaving a tail here just so I have something to tie up at the end. And now that I have that going, I simply will pinch the face just like this and push my yarn through the other side. And depending on how pronounced you want the shaping to be, you can continue this process several times. So I went ahead and did that about two or three times to create this look. And again, I don't know if this is intended to be done on a cat. It's probably not the most ideal project, but this is just for demonstration. So as you can see here, it just adds like a little bit of interest to the side of the face. This can be a really great thing to use on dinosaurs, elephants, all sorts of different creatures. And just like we did with the white yarn, I'm just gonna tie a knot and cut the yarn and push it back into the center of our plushie. So here we can see this technique flattened out the face a bit and created sort of a bridge around the nose. I have another project here that actually shows an example of some of the facial shaping that we just did. And basically you can see here the way that the eyes are pushed in. This is because I actually pulled the yarn through several times to cinch in the face. So this is another really great technique to use on a little dog or something like that. You can really use this in so many different ways. So I'm not sure if the cat was the best example to show you this with because I feel like it does look a little wonky on his face. I definitely will have to Play around with it but that was just kind of a rough idea of what you can do with face shaping i do think that it does look much better on my corgi here i really feel like you can kind of see more ideally how it does bring the project to life it does look a little interesting on that cat but i feel like you get the idea so those were five tips on different ways to enhance your amigurumi projects if you learned anything new here today i'm definitely curious to hear what your favorite tip was in the comments below and if you enjoyed this type of video definitely let me know and I can add on to this list in the future in a different video. So if you have any questions for me, definitely leave them down below and I will try to answer them as soon as I can in a video very soon. Thank you so much for watching and for spending some time with me here today. If you found this informative and you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future content from me. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next time. Bye!